When you're underestimated a lot and you know people see you as weak, sometimes you start to believe that you are weak. We are in the most central part of London ever. I'm right in the heart of the most touristy part of London and also all the shops are here, which is why, oh my God, I'm shopping all the time. London is the best city in the world because we have so much culture, so much history. Like when you look at the buildings, we've got Victorian buildings, we've got Gothic buildings, we've got the museums. It's just so fab, I mean, when you look outside, like, Look how gorgeous the streets are. I was born in Lilongwe, which is a tiny part of Malawi. It's in the heart of Africa. My childhood was very privileged, but also very traumatic. I lost my mother at the age of seven, and then I was adopted by my biological auntie and her husband. She adopted me when she was 22 years old because my biological mother was dying of cervical cancer and I was the youngest of seven siblings. And I remember this, she said to me, do you want to come to, with me to London? And I didn't quite understand what that meant at the pool, but I was just like, yeah. I mean, go to London. I'd never seen multi-storey houses before. I was just used to bungalows. Also, I'd never seen so many white people before. I was just like, oh wait, what? <laughs> Double-decker buses, all of this stuff. I couldn't speak a word of English. It was a lot for me to take in. My favourite area of London is probably Chelsea because, you know, that's my home. That's where I grew up. The houses all look like dolls' houses. I used to cycle down here with my dad because you have the park here as well. And I think it's just such an elegant city. Where I grew up in Chelsea, in Knightsbridge, my mother and I were literally the only black people. You know, I was brought up in a very British way traditionally British, like horse riding, polo, or ballet, all of these things. Like, my mother didn't really believe in teaching me African traditions. I feel as if maybe she wanted to feel accepted and not experience racism, and I feel like maybe she just, you know, she raised me in the way that she thought was according to this country and British society. To stand here, is where I grew up. I have not, I feel actually quite emotional. This is literally where I grew up for, I lived here for like 10 years. This is where I, um, I had my best memories. On the surface, it looked like I had the perfect life because my father made sacrifices to make sure I went to the best boarding schools, the best education, best holidays. But what happened behind closed doors was very difficult. There was a lot of arguments and dispute between my adopted mother and my father and my adopted mother and I. I wasn't allowed to have a relationship with my siblings because my adopted mother, I think when you adopt a child, your biggest fear is that they're going to want to return to their biological family. So I actually didn't have any contact with my brothers and sisters. Um, when I was 20 years old, then I reconnected with my siblings. I literally fell to my knees. Sorry. It, it was... A lot, because I hadn't seen one of my sisters since I was like three years old. And you're looking at these people who look like you, who have the same mannerisms as you, and they love you so much. And to have been denied 
the axis of love. When I went through so much when I was growing up, it was, it was a lot. Big T is this sweet soul, like, keep doing you, Big T. She's got this posh accent, and she can say anything. And just the way she says it and the mannerisms that she has are just incredible. I love Big T, but I don't want her on my team. The cast don't know anything about my grief and what I've gone through in the past. She's so sweet. I love her. I'm actually so impressed with Big T. I didn't know she could do that. People always try to put me in a box, but I don't fit in any box. Before the challenge, I did a show called Shipwrecked, Battle of the Islands. So it was kind of like Survivor, and it was amazing. I realized then that I like to put myself through, I don't know, uncomfortable situations. I was casted for Shipwrecked because they wanted me to be this Chelsea princess, spoiled brat. And I just thought, you know, I'm gonna play out to my stereotype and then I'm gonna let people see the real me. I was like, oh, I'm not carrying my own shoes. Oh my God, this island's tiny. You know, I just did that for comedy and I had fun doing it. So the first time I got the call from the challenge, I didn't actually know what the show was. And then I Googled the challenge and I saw a clip of Kyle headbutting someone. <laughs> and I just thought to myself, absolutely not. Like, I can't do a show like this. These people are absolutely mad. It was actually hilarious. They asked me, you know, when was the last time you went to the gym? And I said, nine years ago. So I didn't think I had to train. And so, yeah, I was like, okay, let's do this. My first season of the challenge was War of the Worlds 2. I was absolutely terrified. Firstly, I got put into this army truck, okay? And then I have to like run with this flagpole and Laurel is there, like wrestling me. And I was like screaming to people being like, help, help, and no one helped me. I was not expecting that. They literally just threw me into the deep end. I was thinking to myself, what have I thrown myself into? Maybe they just don't see us as like, look like needed because we're new. Yeah, I exactly. don't know. Everybody would be in the dining room having their lunch. Me and Sean were like on the loser table. <laughs> and we would like eat lunch by the bushes. <laughs> literally no one wanted to get to know us. No one wanted to speak to us. We were literally the unpopular kids. Big T. There it is. I wasn't surprised that I, had, I was thrown in because I didn't understand that you had to make alliances. But I'm actually glad that I was thrown in because I put up a pretty good fight and I'm really proud of myself for that. I'm not winning today, but... That was the first time in my life that I realized I was stronger than I am. Unfortunately, it just wasn't your night tonight. Take care of yourself. Well done, Big T. Bye, guys! You know, my first season was very difficult. What shocked me was when I got to the hotel room after I was eliminated, I cried. I really cried, I was so upset. Cause I was thinking to myself, wow, I'm never going to do this show again. I had one shot. I didn't have a good experience, but I wanted to go back. In a way, I'm kind of grateful for my first experience of the challenge because it shaped how I play the game. Every time they're rookies, I always want rookies to feel welcome. Cause I never want any, anybody to have the same rookie experience that I did. As a child, I did a lot of sports, but not like the traditional American sports. Honestly, I had a really hot tennis coach. <laughs> he made me love tennis, because I was just like, Mr. Kovic, yes. And so I did lots of tennis lessons. The challenge has really changed my life, because number one, <laughs> I used to be a couch potato. <laughs> Now, I go to the gym from morning to night. The gym manager's like, are you okay? I can't even open the door <laughs> when I'm leaving the gym. 
I actually like stumble like up the stairs. I'm more competitive now, actually. And I I wanna win. This will be the hardest thing that you have ever done. Oh, I had no idea that they would ever call me back. I was absolutely shocked, I was baffled because, you know, I had a lot of people, like, especially the females being like, oh, you'll never see her again on the show. And for some reason, you know, I was looking on Instagram, the fans seemed to like me and, you know, I feel like maybe they had a part of the reason why I got the call back. Big T, Casey, Anissa, Bananas, congratulations. Oh, who's the winning team? Oh, is it, is it my team? Total Madness was my best season ever. I had so much fun. I met Melissa, Bananas, Carl and I became best friends. And I lasted a lot longer then. On you go, on you go. Check, check. Stop it, <laughs> I feel like I was received differently on Total Madness because I had such a great reaction from the fans supporting me. I had people who didn't speak to me on my first season being like, oh, Big T, I love you. And oh, Big T, you're great. It's like, you don't know anything about me. You haven't even had a conversation with me. And that, I, I didn't like that at all. Fessy was my really good friend in Total Madness, but I was part of an alliance and they were like, we need to vote him in. I voted him in, felt so guilty, and I got really drunk that night. I need some champagne for this. Everyone keeps telling me to toughen up, and do you know what? He told you to toughen up? Everyone. I haven't. Everyone's like, are you, are you a savage now? Well, guess what? I guess I am. So I jumped off my bunk bed and then I split my toe and because I was so wasted, I didn't realise and I hate blood. I see the blood and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to faint. <laughs> I'm going to faint. I think there was even a moment where I asked someone to put a wig on me just in case the doctor was hot because, you know, I was single. It was an absolute catastrophe. <laughs> Please tell me it's okay. Please tell me it's okay. It's fine. Please tell me it's okay. Tell me some fresh cut bread. Fresh cut bread. I was so disappointed that I went home because I had a really strong alliance that season, and I I was having a lot of fun. My next season was Double Agents in 2021, and that was my breakout season. That was so much fun. CT. You now have Big T. Yeah! Big T, let's go! <laughs> when I see Big T, I see a girl with a lot of heart who's willing to throw a body in harm's way for a million dollars. Me and Big T, we got, we got big plans. I'm gonna turn her into a warrior. I was partnered with an absolute legend, CT. Like, come on, like, it was amazing. I think in the past, CT has been quite harsh to his partners. And I think he wanted to change how he treats his partners. So with me, he was patient, he was encouraging, he was kind. He talked me through my biggest fears. CT was like, yeah, show me your mean face. I was like, ah! Come on, let me see that mean face. I was in shock when my body was like this, when I like bungee jumped backwards, I couldn't move. I was stiff because I was in shock. I was absolutely terrified. Do you want to stay with Big T? It's up to you, man. Cam, give me Cam. I've been waiting all season for Cam. I f***ed up in the very beginning. F*** you, Kyle. She's mine. Get down here. I don't give a f I got my scout. We're going to the final, baby. You there, Kim? Bye, baby. You, you, you. Oh, baby. Look, I know that I'm not the strongest physically, and I said to CT, you know what? If you want to trade partners, I'm not going to take it personally. And he was like, "There's no way that I'm going to trade partners with you. It's you and me to the end." He was saying this on the bus. He was saying this to me before we went down into the elimination ground. And then for him to blindside me and to do that speech in that way, I just felt humiliated. 
because I felt so confident that this is somebody who wanted to stick with me to the end. I'm an easygoing person. I don't mind if you switch partners. I saw that coming. Nobody wants to be with me in this game anyway. I'm not the best challenge. I'm not the best competitor. But the thing is, is the way that you delivered that was so humiliating. So CT, fine. I thought you were joking. I think the reason why CT blindsided me is because he's done so many seasons of the game. And I think that when you play this game year after year after year, season after season, I think it can desensitize you to people's emotions and you forget to have empathy and you can lose yourself. And that's exactly what he did. I actually am very wary of people who've done many seasons of the challenge because I feel like they struggle to differentiate real life and the game. I love you like a sister, I do. You are the unsung hero of this challenge. You went from going in first every time to how am I gonna win this final? I'm not gonna let him off the hook that easily because if somebody can make you feel that small, you should be very careful about letting them back into your heart. I did an elimination against Anissa. I was really scared. I think you can see on my face that I was so shocked that I won. <laughs> it's like, I couldn't believe that I beat Anissa. Wow. Then I did another daily challenge and I actually injured my knee. I know this is not an excuse because Amber is strong. I wasn't like my full strength and who brawls are scary, okay? <laughs> I was terrified. But Amber eliminated me and, you know, she did a good job. Bloody hell. Spies, lies, and allies. Oh my goodness. That was such a bad season for me. I am waiting here. Please, someone pick me already. And you see Big T like Baywatch running down. She was really actually running in slow motion, I think. But she's gonna be a great partner in this game. Tommy? Oh my God, people from Survivor, do not trust them. Because Tommy was like, oh, Michelle's my best friend. She's going to my wedding. And then I said to Tommy, like, who should we put in? He was like, Michelle. I was like, what? What? <laughs> I was like, what is wrong with you Survivor people? All the vets were like working together. And because I was friends with the rookies and I was in a room with the rookies, they thought that I was making some rookie alliance, which I really could have done, which really annoyed me. Because the rookies were asking me questions like, can we trust Ashley? Can we trust this person? Who should we go for? And I defended every single one of the vets. So we were in the sea and you know, Tommy thought I was behind him, but actually I'm a fast swimmer. I was in front of him. And he hit his head in a rock. And okay, this was so bad because I've never seen this before. One eye was moving like this and the other people was huge. And he was like, Big T, am I okay? I was like, yeah, you're fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you know, I had to go tell production, like there's something up with Tommy because I could tell that he was very injured. There's 14 pets, there's 14 rookies, okay? Right now we're dead even. We're in a good spot because a lot of these rookies sway and do whatever we want, right? Mm -hmm. I just know that Big T, from what, I'm, what I've heard the other vet girls say, they don't trust her. If she's really somebody we don't trust, I have a reason to take a shot. She took a shot at me last season and threw me against Anissa, and I went home. Devin, thank God, he stood up for me. But like, I was very disappointed that the vets didn't trust me. I really could have made some big moves that season. And my God, I wish I did. All right, Emmy ready. Big T ready. Go. Great. Do you know what the most embarrassing thing is about that elimination? I saw the tank of water and I was like, I got this. I saw the ice, I was like, I'm British, I've got this. I saw the puzzle, I was like, hallelujah. <laughs> 
And I remember just doing the interview being like, I'm the puzzle queen. Oh my gosh, you beat me. I'm so embarrassing. And do you know what the most embarrassing part is? Is like, people come up to me being like, do you remember when you said you were the puzzle queen and <laughs> you got eliminated? <laughs> Good job. After Spies, Lies and Allies, I didn't feel confident within myself and I thought I was weak. I think it was Tori. She was partnered up with me and she started crying. And she was like, Big T, I don't mean any disrespect, but I really want to win. I was like, oh my God, whoever's team I was on, they were like, oh, bloody hell, like Big T. I and it, it did affect me. There's like only so much that you can take. And I was just like, okay, I need to be out of this environment. Either I don't come back or I train really hard and I come back. I needed to take a break from the challenge because it's a very intense environment. So in 2022, I went to Le Cordon Bleu and I am a certified patisserie and cuisine chef. And yes, I'll do that in a French accent because I can. <laughs> school was so tough. I literally thought that going to cooking school was gonna be like, oh yeah, I'm taking a break from the challenge. It was the toughest thing ever. But like when you want something, you have to make sacrifices and work really, really hard for it. And I was up at like 6 a.m., 5 a.m. every morning, coming back home, I was too tired to turn the lights off. I'm proud that I did that. I needed to win. Some friends coming over? Yes, I do. I'm doing like a Sunday roast dinner. My adopted mother got me into cooking. Somehow, no matter how bad the situation would get, we would sit down at the dinner table and we would be civil to each other and we'd share a meal. So for me, cooking is about you know, being a family and coming together. My adopted father, he was like this white man and he took me in as his own daughter and you know, that's my dad. I loved him so much. You know, he passed away uh, during cooking school and it was really traumatic because somebody tried to make sure that I didn't know that he died. I wasn't invited to the funeral. It was the hardest thing I've gone through in my adult life. And it's something that I'm, I'm healing from. Melissa was there every step of the way. Like she was calling funeral homes. We were trying to find where my dad's body was. And that's why I, like, she's just an amazing person. We met in total madness and um, it took us like three weeks to become best friends because I wasn't there for very long. But for some reason, like, we just completely connected. Melissa isn't a friend, she's family. She's a sister to me and I would do anything for her. Cooking. It makes me de-stress and I feel like it's a great way to like learn about other people's cultures. Because when I went to cooking school, the chef said to me, you know, there are 22 of you in this class and there are 16 different nationalities. And we're all together and we're sharing our cultures through food. There's no racism, there's no animosity. And I, I just feel like food brings people together and that for me is amazing. So I love being around people. Hi. You all right? Yes. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I met Sean on Shipwrecked. Sean actually made me lose Shipwrecked. So <laughs> he left my island, which was Shark Island, for love, because uh, he fell in love with this guy called Chris. And yeah, so we lost because of Sean. <laughs> What have you made? I've made us some lamb and some roast potatoes. Oh, I did English roast. God. Yeah. Get them cooking skills. Oh, did you like a glass of uh, bubbly or? Yes. I've missed you. Who else is coming? This new friend I made called James. Okay. I actually made From a new friend. Show. Yeah. Okay. He's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> just wait, just wait, you're chill. Wait, you're chill. Wait, Hold on. Big T, you get on the ground. 39 was my worst season ever. <laughs> 
couldn't believe it. Okay, me, who's nice to all the rookies, and then I'm like now in 39 with rookies and everybody turned their back against me. I've heard my name brought up and I wasn't expecting that. The weirdest thing was coming back to the challenge in 39, I was the person who had done the most amount of seasons. I was no longer a rookie. I was a vet and it was interesting because I felt like a vet for the first time. I'm going to come with Big T. They kept sending me down into the elimination. I was like, bloody hell, how much do you want to get me out of this house? When I kept coming back, I was like, you can't get rid of me that easily. <laughs> Going against Casey, when I saw that Paul wrestle, I was just like, it's game over. But do you know what? I actually felt worse for Casey because she and I are best friends and she did not want to take me out. I was really disappointed because for the first time ever, I actually really enjoyed the daily challenges and I really wanted to carry on the experience. And I and actually, for the first time, believed that I could have won. And I've never genuinely believed that before. You know, I'm gonna come in with my vet friends who I'm loyal with next season and those people will be dealt with. <laughs> we all know how brave she's been. I'm proud of you. I love you. And cheers to Big T. I recently dated a woman and this is something that's like new to me. I decided to have a pride party because in my country, in my culture, unfortunately it's very like homophobic. And as a black woman to like come out, I feel as if it was important for me to do that because hopefully I can give somebody the confidence to be brave to come out. It's something I'm worried about because obviously my family don't know and I haven't spoken to them about it and it's a conversation that I have to have, but this is my thing. When I'm on television and the challenge, whatever show, I want to show all parts of myself and I want to be brave to conquer my fears and coming out was one of them and I like to give people confidence to be themselves and if I can have that impact then that makes my career worth it. You know, this is the most open I've been because people don't really know me and actually on the challenge as well, like maybe only Melissa and maybe two other people know about my past. I wanted the public to know me as Big T. I didn't want people to feel sorry for me. I didn't want to come in and be like, oh, look, this is what I've gone through because I feel like sometimes people can use that to be like the victim or feel sorry. I, I wanted people to see me as strong, you know, and this is what I'm happy. I'm strong, I'm happy, and I'm telling my story now because the public have been very kind to me and I want to share all elements of myself. So where are you? <laughs> hmm? I'm, I'm in my cousin's bed. What are you doing? I'm with my new alliance, which you're not part of. <laughs> Just me, you and a bottle of wine. <laughs> it's a beef. I want to win the challenge, but not just for me. I want to win for the underdogs, the people who are underestimated. I want to win also for the people who support me because I've had a lot of lows on the challenge. I haven't had that many wins. And there are people who are so loyal and they believe in me and they uplift me. And you have no idea how much that affects me. When you have people who believe in you, even after you fail and you fail, you get eliminated. That is an amazing feeling. I want them to be inspired because you are strong enough. You can get yourself out of any situation. And you have to be brave to live this crazy life. I found my people here in London, but the thing is, it's just like, I don't feel as if I belong anywhere. And you know, at first, that made me feel very lonely. It made me feel very insecure. But then I realized it's fine not to belong anywhere because I am me. I'm Tula.